Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! What's going on, Donkey Kong? Dr. Movie Time, another episode for you. Uh, still going through the Tubi list, as always. And uh, here's one that, uh, if, any, if any of you remember uh, a show I was on called Short Bus Cinema with my good friend Johnny Krug. Well, I sure do miss Johnny. Um, he always talked about this movie, and I never got a chance to see it. I knew he was a really big fan of this one. And uh, so, had it on the list, decided to check it out. And that movie is Southbound from 2015. Says it's a horror thriller. Um, like I said, you can check it out on Tubi. It's got 5.9 out of 10 rating on IMDb. 81% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, I mean, you know, a lot of people like this one, and I can see why. So, uh, let's read a quick synopsis here. This is interlocking tales of highway terror revolve around malevolent spirits at a truck stop, a mysterious traveler, a car accident, and a home invasion. Yeah. So, it's, it's, it's kind of like an anthology. And it's hitting a lot of things. We'll we'll get into that in a minute. As far as the cast, um, you got a lot of up and comers here, right? Almost half the cast was in like one of the VHS movies, maybe in part two. I know some were in Ready or Not. Uh, there, there's a lot of people. That, uh, there was one young lady that was in Starry Eyes. Um, don't want to go through all of that while trying to drive here, but uh, you know. You're starting to see these folks a lot, and I don't know the backstory on this one. I don't know if that came out uh, as a project after the VHS movies came out and, and did pretty decent. This was another anthology type thing to, to throw these people at. I mean, if you get asked, you're going to say, absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. So let's let's kind of talk about this one. I, <laughs> I was really impressed. Um, like I said, it, it, it's like an anthology, but it moves totally different. You know, you, you've got a, uh, you got a situation where they all just bleed into each other. Very Pulp Fictionist, right? Pulp Fiction-ish. Um, and I, I, I don't know, there's something I really liked about this. It starts off with these guys driving a, 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 a truck, and it looks like it's late at night. They're kind of bloody from head to toe. They've been through something traumatic for sure. There's a DJ on the radio saying, hey, this next one's for all of you out there that are, you know, running from your demons and staying low in the light, you know, all these kind of things. But it was referring to whatever it is they've been involved in. I mean, it could have been, could have not been. So that's the brilliant of this thing. They end up stopping at this gas station, this little restaurant, really, just a side of the road diner kind of thing. And, uh, you know, they're trying to get cleaned up and uh, move on. And obviously, they've been through some traumatic stuff. And one of them goes to the restroom to kind of clean up, and something weird happens in the bathroom, freaks him out. So, it's time to go. They take off in the truck, and you notice in the background, these things are just hovering in the air, right? These these kind of dark figures that are just, you know, I'd say a good 20, 25 feet in the air, just hovering, sitting still. But obviously, they are there to keep an eye on these guys, right? They're after them. These things are pretty creepy. Uh, they decide to leave the diner, and then when they drive down the road, guess what? They're at the diner again. So you kind of got the children of corn, children of the corn thing where no matter where you drive, you're going to come right back to the same spot over and over and over, right? So they're trapped. They can't leave this diner. 
And uh, the one guy's look, look, man, we just got to give up. You know, we're not, we're not getting out of this. And the other one's like, screw you, I'm getting out of here. And then all of a sudden, one of these figures come down out of the sky. And up close, I mean, you've got some CGI stuff here. Obviously, they're like Grim Reapers, demons, whatever you want to call them. They look much cooler floating off in the distance than they do up close because they've got that CGI thing about them. But anywho, um, they end up killing one of them. And that kind of leads into the next story. I mean, this, this guy goes into uh, the other guy that survives goes into this hotel room and he obviously he's been being messed with and he thinks he sees his young daughter running through this hotel room, you know, almost like an apartment kind of thing. And he's freaking out because obviously something bad has happened in this place. There's blood all over the walls. So he's reliving this nightmare. It's almost like you're in your own hell through all this stuff. Every, every person. Well, after you get through that part, it goes to another hotel room that these door, this door opens up and these young ladies and they're a band and they're getting in their Volkswagen van and driving down the road, got a flat tire. They get picked up by these weird old people. They take them back. They give them a place to stay. They give them some food to eat, but they probably shouldn't eat the food. Two of them eat the food. One of them does it. Those two start getting sick and you can tell they're slowly starting to change. The other girl feels like everything is just off the cuff, which it is. These are some strange people. And uh, she is wanting to get out of there, but the other two are totally comfortable there. So they're already under some kind of spell or whatever. And uh, she falls asleep, the one that wants to leave, and wakes up later on and notices that the other two girls are gone. And hears a noise outside and goes out there and they're doing some kind of weird ceremony <laughs> with these girls and giving them the curse of never growing old, right? And then this girl accidentally steps into a bear trap that these people have set out there. And the two young girls that used to be in the band or is in the band, I guess the band has quit by this point, right? All right, this band is done. <laughs> after all this mess. And uh, the two girls come crawling at her while she's trying to get her foot out of the bear trap. Uh, slashes one of them in the face with a knife that she's got, kicks the other one in the face, takes off running, ends up running out in the middle of the road. But that leads to this other guy that's driving down the road. He's talking on his phone to his wife, girlfriend, fiance, whatever she is. I think it's his wife. Not really paying attention. The girl runs right out in front of him. He smacks her with the car, tears her up pretty bad. And that leads to the next story. That's what I mean. These, these things, it's not like you stay, you know, very long at all with these characters. These things, these things move so fast. And so he's damaged this girl, right? She's in bad shape. I mean, she's got legs twisted the wrong way, all that kind of good stuff. He calls 911. They start telling him what to do. And he's like, are, are you sure? And they're like, yeah, we, we need you to, you need to load her up because you're out in the middle of nowhere. You need to load her up in your car. Go ahead and pick her up, put her in your car, bring her to whatever town that you see ahead, right? So he knows something is up because one of them says his name while he's talking on the phone. He's like, oh, wait a minute. How do you know my name? Well, you know, we, we, we got your phone call, so we know it's attached to your name. So they make it an excuse. So he ends up taking this girl to the, the nearest, nearest town, sees a sign for a hospital, goes to the emergency room. There's not a person in this whole <laughs> hospital. And he's freaking out, can't find anybody. She's hemorrhaging. He lays her on the table. And this person that's on the phone with him, the 911, you know, caller or whatever, <laughs> uh, they're telling them what to do. Like, you know, you're going to have to give her a tracheotomy and all these things, right? So he's like freaking out. It's very intense. 
because this guy, you know, he don't know the girl. He's he's having to do this stuff, and he don't know anything, and he's going by the words of this woman. Then all of a sudden, this other guy comes up and says, look, I'm a surgeon. You need to do this. If you don't want her to die, you got to keep your hand in her mouth, right, which happened from something earlier. And then he makes her take, makes it, the guy take a scalpel and cut her, make an incision down below her ribs because he says she's got a, a, a lung that's, you know, being crushed. You got to reach in there and, and fix this lung. And when he reaches in there and he does what the doctor says, it kills her instantly. And then you hear her laughing on the phone. Wow. Pretty insane. And then when he leaves, well, he don't, he, he, he says, you know, he's trapped there for a while. He's locked in. He, he can't leave. He gets another phone call from these people. They're like, look, you've done well. We're going to let you go. But they get him a change of clothes in the locker room at the hospital. He cleans up, changes clothes, go outside. They get him a new car. The windshield was all busted out and everything. The other one jumps in the car and he starts heading home. And when he's heading home, he says, do I, he, he's talking to the people again on the phone. He's like, do I need to worry about what happened back there? And they go, absolutely not. Have a safe trip home. Safe, safe trip home. And then it shows a phone booth. And this woman is the one that's talking to him. She hangs up the phone. And then we go to this next part where she goes into this bar to have a drink. And this guy busts in with a shotgun. You think he's there to rob the place, but he's looking for his sister. And they're trying to get the gun out of this guy's hand, right? Stop him from causing any trouble. And he ends up shooting a guy, shooting his hand off. And when he does, he screams like a demon. And, you know, you can tell something's up here, right? He gets the bartender and makes him drive him to where his sister is. He, uh, this guy's looking for his sister, and he knows that she's around there. And he rides with this. He makes this guy take him to where she is. And, you know, can you trust this guy? I don't know. But he drives to this place, takes the dude inside, and this guy gets a foreshadowing of, dude, you're you're screwed. I mean, you're you are not gonna make it out of all this. I mean, this is not gonna end well for you, dude. And uh, so he don't pay the dude any mind though. And he goes in this room, and everybody's got this tattoo of an of an eye and this symbolism around the eye, and it's all on their hand, and they hold up their hand to their eye covering their eye and it's like it's their other eye you know so they can see these things i guess well he goes in this room and his sister's in there giving the tattoos and he's like sis i've come to get you getting you out of here she's like i don't want to go i like it here but he forces her to leave and they get in the car they drive out in the middle of nowhere and then obviously weird things are happening and she's like look you know, you know, you know what happened to mom and dad. I killed them because I wanted to. This place has accepted me and I'm happy here. And it gets to where she knows something bad is about to happen. And they're driving almost across like the desert. And camera gets real shaky real freaky and she's just telling him just keep going keep going go as fast as you can go don't stop i know you can't see anything there's nothing to see just drive and all of a sudden gets to a point to where the car just stops and next thing you know her brother gets pulled out of the car by these people and it's the vision that the other guy saw earlier where they take him and pretty much start ripping him apart she just jumps in the car and heads back to town where she wants to be. <laughs> and when she gets back into town, she's walking back into where she works. And there's this little blonde headed girl walking by and she's looked at her and says, well, what are you looking at? And that leads to the next story. This little blonde is there with her mom and dad and they're vacationing. I don't know. They're staying at this place and you kind of get a stranger set up here, right? These people come in, they're wearing masks. It's a home invasion kind of thing, and it's pretty rough. 
and they are there to kill somebody. That's what they're there for. And they end up killing the wife, and then they've got the husband down there, and one of them holds out a picture, and it's a little blonde-headed girl. And he just holds it there. So obviously, this dad has done something before to this little girl, because that's why they're there is for revenge. Well, they end up killing the dad, but then the teenage girl starts getting kind of getting her own revenge. She has one of them come out to the car. You know, she sets a golf club on the horn to make it, you know, go off. Dude comes out there. She beats the crap out of him, runs back into the house and sees that her parents are dead, faces off with the other two guys. And when those guys pull off their mask, it's the two guys at the beginning of the movie that are driving the truck. So this is the wraparound. They, they are there to get rid of this evil that this guy has done. But when they did that and they end up killing both the parents and they end up killing the teenager, those reefer, reaper, <laughs> reefers, <laughs> that's a different movie. Uh, those reapers start coming up out of their bodies and start just following them everywhere they go. Right. And that's when they jump in the truck and they take off and it's, that's it. It's, that's the wraparound. Right. So this, this movie just goes in a cycle, and it, and it doesn't end. It's pretty dang brilliant, really. I mean, this is a well-done anthology to where it's just not cutting the different stories. This is really put together well. I can see why Johnny was drawn to it, because it is quite clever. It's as clever as Trick or Treat, like the, you know, the newer version of that, not the 86 version that I love so much. I love both of them, actually. But yeah, it's it's that kind of clever. It's well well put together. Uh, I'm going to give this a four out of five. I need to watch it again. It may even be a five out of five. I really enjoyed it. And uh, let me know what you think about this one. If you're a fan of this, um, I'm a little late to the game on this, and I knew about it all this time. I just never got around to watching it. You know, we've all got our weak points. And uh, I'm impressed. I like it. So, uh, let me know what you think. That's my thoughts on Southbound. Uh, if you got any other requests or something that goes along with this, any kind of anthologies you think I should check out, let me know. I'd be glad to do them for you for a listener's request. All right, folks, that's it for this episode. We will check, 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 check later. Dr. Boobie!